We're looking at a multi-level sparsy network that will be processing an 8-frame video of a person walking. And the goal is to show that sparsy implements a hierarchical parts-based or compositional representation uh, of its inputs. The input level is a 64 by 64 pixel binary pixel grid and each of the internal levels is a sheet of macro columns and this is roughly intended to be an, uh, analogous to the ventral visual stream so my L1 corresponds to cortical V1, L2 corresponds to V2 and so forth up the, up the chain. On this first time step the pixels active in the input level send feed forward or bottom up inputs to the L1 max and L1 max that have a sufficient number of active pixels in their receptive fields activate uh, highlighted in red. If we click on one of these active L1 max the blue lines uh, show the feed forward synapses from the pixels comprising the max receptive field onto just one of the cells in that MAC. We can look at the plan view of the input level and we can see the, the blue cells here represent the receptive field of the L1 MAC that I clicked on. So the L1 receptive fields, L1 MAC receptive fields consist of 16, 17, 18, approximately that number of uh, pixels and they overlap. If we go back to the 3D view and if we advance the frame, let's advance a few frames into this video, you can see the bottom level updating, yeah, you know, the input patterns updating. Let's go a few frames. So if I now select an L2 Mac, which has become active, and go to the plan view of the input level again, you can see this receptive field is larger than the L1 max receptive field. And if we select uh, an L3 MAC and go to back to the input level and show the plan again, you can see the receptive field is increasing as you move up the hierarchy. So how is this representation parts based or compositional. Well, let's go to, let's start by going to L1 and looking at the plan view. This is the set of pixels present, present at, uh, on the fourth frame of input. And if we click on this restrict inputs, when we have that checked, we're showing, we're showing just the subset of pixels that actually are being represented by at least one active MAC at L1. If I take the checkbox off, it shows the actual, the, the complete set of pixels active on this frame. So what you're looking at here is the set of pixels represented on this frame at L1 by the union of all these active L1 MACs. Again, the rose colored MACs are active. So I can click on any one of them and what you see is the set of pixels that are activating the the selected MAC, the purple MAC. And if I click around, you can see uh, that every one of these MACs represents a particular feature. You can call this a feature. And neighboring MACs often represent uh, overlapping pixels. I mean, the, the pixels overlap in the features. So this, there's a substantial redundancy here. So when a MAC is active, it's actually a sparse code that's being selected or activated within that, that MAC. But at L1, the scale is too small to show those codes, so we're going to move up the hierarchy a bit to show that. So let's go up to three, level four, yeah, level four, no, level, let's go up to the next level. If I click on this Mac here, well, let's, let's do this one, that's the set of pixels being represented by whatever code is active in this Mac, and if I show the neurons, this is the code that's active in that MAC. The each, uh, a MAC code represent is comprised of one winner in each of the mini columns, the winner take all mini columns that comprise that MAC. Every MAC here is composed of, uh, consists of seven mini columns, and so that means a MAC code consists of seven active cells. This is the black ones that you see here. Let's go another time step 
further and go up a level and see them a little more. So here's the codes in the max at the next higher level and you can see the portions of the input image that are represented by those max. If I click on one of them, that's the portion of the input image represented by that Mac. And there's the portion represented by that Mac. And there's the portion represented by that Mac, and so forth. I'll get rid of the neurons here. And what you see is that uh, we can think of uh, the portions of the image represented by Macs as, uh, as conjunctions of parts. So this Mac represents these two parts. We could call them parts A and B. This Mac represents this part. So quite often, as we pop around the image, uh, let's see, you you can see the overlap at the part level. So this Mac represents these three parts, and this Mac represents these two parts, and one part is in common. I mean, roughly speaking, and these are part these parts or these features are again not programmed into the model. They emerge through the course of learning. And here's the entire set of pixels represented at this level. This is the entire set of pixels present on this time step at the input level. Those are the subset that are actually represented. Let's go another time step. Uh, let's click on this Mac. And it's really the same story here. There's, there are overlapping representations, uh, redundancy amongst the features represented by the max at a given level, and the same story ex unfolds simultaneously across all levels. So overall, it's appropriate to describe this sparsity as implementing a parts-based representation, uh, but across an arbitrary number of levels, in this case, nine internal levels.